So, okay, this is an unscripted video, but I want to record it because my mind has just been absolutely blown. This morning, I had discovered by complete accident an application called Quiver. Now, before I go any further, Quiver is not an online app, something that you're going to use online. Quiver is actually an open source project uh, that is currently up on GitHub. I'll put a link in the URL below uh, this video. But what it allows you to do is to create your own database where you can store your own files, information and transcripts and then use AIs such as ChatGPT or maybe Vakuna, something you've got installed locally, to query it. Essentially creating your own data set to use against a language model. Now, the beauty of this is because it is your own database, it uses Superbase for those who are familiar with the technology, you can create brains. In fact, Quiver promotes itself as your extra brain. And while this is the database backend that no one cares about, the important thing about this is because it is my own database, I am not worried about the data that I am storing here as it is only accessible by me. What the tool is going to do is take the document documents that I upload or URLs that I tell it to scrape. It's going to go through, chunk it up and store it in this database for a language model to then query against. So the setup for this tool took me about 10, 15 minutes. Yes, you do have to be a little bit of a geek. I am not going to, uh, to cover over that in this particular video, although I will do an install video later on. The designers have done a great job at uh, getting it to be easy to install. But what you'll see up here is that the URL is a local host. Local host means that this is running off my own computer. So now that it's installed, the very first thing that I did is I go to this upload area and it allows me to upload documents, spreadsheets, presentations, files, or put into URLs to teach it what I want to teach it. In fact, this particular demo where my mind got completely blown is I've created a brain called Akara, which is where the Australian National Curriculum is stored. And I'm actually gonna go through and upload all the information from the ACARA website on the Digital Technologies Curriculum. In fact, what I did is I went to their website and downloaded all the information. You know, the scopes and sequence, uh, the general capabilities, the learning areas, cross-curriculum priorities, all the information that I had as a teacher to go and use to, to build out my lesson plans and my activities. Because I've now taught at this, I then went to URLs. I went to URLs such as, again, the ACARA website or to the PBL website. I, I'm a big fan of project-based learning. I wanted to teach it what this meant. I took these URLs, pasted it in, and fed it. And what I ended up doing is building up a brain where it now has all that information stored and queryable so that I can now do incredible things even faster. Now, before I do the, the, the life part of the demo, again, the other cool thing is that you can then connect it with your favorite uh, large language model. Now, I'm using GPT-4, so it's going to be using that for doing the querying, but it's going to be doing it against my data set. But again, for the geeks in the room, you can connect it. If you want to install Llama or Vakuna or Claude locally and run it off your own local LLM, you can do that too, meaning that nothing is web connected. And you can set things like the temperature, how many tokens you want to use. It's really configurable. But that's enough of the back end of it all. How do I actually use this in practice? Well, now that I've given it all this information, I can now talk to it to create things. So here's one I just did before. I'll do a live demo in a second. But here's a create a PBL oriented task that covers. I won't read out the number. I'll let you read that for a year six class and differentiate it in three ways for students with different learning support needs. Because I also went to the Australian Curriculum website and uploaded all the information into my database so it understands what Australia looks at when we look at learning support. At the end, it's going to provide marking instructions and information for the teacher to assess. So what is now done, knowing that it's able to look up all this information from my database, it's gone through and created a task as well as differentiating strategies, in this case for students with um, learning uh, with reading difficulties or those who have attention deficit disorders or those with uh, ESL, a second language, um, and needs. It then has marking instructions. Now again, if I assume that I've just randomly put in a number, I was even able to ask it, well, that's fantastic. Tell me what this contains in the scope and sequence and it's been able to bring that back out for me. 
This is the excitement that I now have. I now have a custom trained database that I can now use to create and ideate learning activities, uh, assessment modes, um, and, and things to share, not just myself, but my fellow educators. So again, let's just do one more. Again, I'm gonna start with a scope and sequence. Here's just a document. Um, let's say I'm gonna do something for year eight, looking at uh, wireless and, and wired networking, All right? So I'm just gonna go through, and uh, just to make it faster, I'm just gonna grab that number. Or, in fact, I didn't even have to do that, you know. Um, what are the scope and sequences related to wireless and wired networking. So now that I know the kind of tasks I want to create, I've put this into the system, it's querying against my database and providing the result. So here, it's discovered that that scope and sequence is indeed the, the K014. It tells me that the, the, the year groups that this is gonna be for, fantastic. So now that I know that, I'm gonna say, you know what, uh, create me a group task focused on critical thinking. Um, it should be for students in groups of four and allow for online and in classroom elements and and again let's just say yeah provide a differentiation for students of different uh, ability levels so obviously i'm making this up on the spot you know it's not quite making sense but i want to show enough here for you to see what it's now able to do now that it has access to that information okay so now we see our output I can see that we've got a, a design your own city. We could put the students into groups of four. We're going to divide into a research and design task. I actually quite like this. Um, you know, each group at the end is going to be presented to their class. We've got some differentiation strategies outlined here. And again, you know, the goal of this task is to encourage critical thinking collaboration. Okay, you know, I really like that. But uh, let's just say create a variant of this task that also includes some of the key cross curriculum components because again i have taught it what the cross curriculum elements are so now it's going to go through to create a variant of the task and let's see how it now adapts with added cross curriculum elements and so here we have uh, a new variation of the task and cross curriculum components. So the task incorporates the priorities for sustainable agile culture. Okay, cool. So again, I'd never trust an AI to create whole things from scratch. You know, anytime I use this tool, I'll still look at it and, and read through it, make sure I'm happy with it, probably make some adjustments. But when it comes to the ideation, making sure I'm covering each of the different elements of the curriculum that I need to, and even to do things such as create rubrics and create marking guides, this will save me hours of work so i said this is just a quick unscripted video i hope it's been useful for you i hope your mind is blown by as much as i am because just remember you can create as many different brains as you want i've created a brain for looking at ai policy i'm going to be creating a brain for what i do for work i'm going to create a brain for how i can better myself as an educator and fill it with all the information that i find on linkedin and online to create my own custom brain that i can now leverage at any point in time so please, for more information, do check out the Quiver project. Again, it's an open source project. You will need to install this or have someone install this for you. I'll do a video on that later on. In the meantime, thanks for watching.